Uh, hi, my name is Jeff White. I'm the owner of eBike Generation. Uh, we're a company that specializes in uh, heavy duty e-bikes uh, for hunters and outdoor enthusiasts. Uh, today I have with me uh, Peter Godleski. He's the president of Rungu e-bikes. Uh, Rungu uh, builds a dually e-bike that is uh, unique and has some special capability. Uh, Peter came up from California to visit me in my home state of Oregon uh, in the month of May this year, and, and we went on a ride together on a couple of uh, Rungu Dooley e-bikes. So I have him here today. We can talk a little bit about that experience and what makes Rungu e-bikes special. So welcome, Peter. <clears throat> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, pleasure to see you again after, uh, what was it, a, a month, um, particularly riding in the rain is... Uh, but we get more rain nowadays. Having it with trees, that's a new experience. That was a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah. well, thank you for having me. Yeah, we had a we had uh, definitely had a wet day of riding, but it was great. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the models of the bikes that we were riding? Sure, Jeff. So we were both on Rungu Dually Steep uh, e-bikes and. They are, of course, Rungu Dooley with the patented front end, but they are our sort of middle of the middle of the uh, line of models that we have and single battery models that um, are are good. If you're doing less than 5,000 acres, these are about these are about the right size, right um, capacity e-bikes that you're going to need for your hunt. So, so Peter, as we started our ride, so the the dual front wheel experience was new to me, and uh, frankly, as as an engineer, I was expecting to have some trouble with it. But at high speeds, it was really easy uh, to control. Can you explain some of the engineering that goes into that bike? Certainly, thanks. The um, what we 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 have a patented version of Ackerman steering, which is the same kind of steering that you have on any uh, vehicle that has two front wheels, cars, uh, like the Polaris slingshot, like uh, uh, ATVs, all of them have this kind of canted steering system that was te new technology 150 years ago. And what we did was take it, bring it up to date using a lot of fancy mathematics to optimize it for the kind of spacing to take advantage of a narrower path so you could get onto narrower trails, but at the same time have some of the benefits of an ATV, which is that you don't wash out, you're not you know, fighting the front end, you don't need a tremendous amount of skill to, um, to navigate or to, to navigate some more difficult terrain. So, so one thing I noticed, it was it was pretty easy for me to control the bike at high speeds, but uh, you probably noticed on our ride, uh, I struggled a little bit in some of the lower speed sections, uh, and it didn't seem like you were having those kind of issues. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, getting accustomed to the bike at lower speeds and what that entails. When we started the ride, uh, you were in a high gear and you were going at a pretty low cadence. And that was um, two things about that. It made it much more difficult to ride because as you can see on the terrain, it wasn't that easy. I mean, it was pretty muddy, it was really slick. And you um, and when you're just uh, trying to aim the bike through the different ruts and through the, through the mud and pedal slowly, shifting your weight from one side to the other, you're just adding to the, to the challenge. And not to mention that's a, an inefficient way to ride. With e-bikes, the motors are always, the, the cadence needs to be fast in order to get the most range out of your e-bike battery, something that we can talk about separately. And um, what we do with all of our new customers, which I don't think, I, I don't recall when we talked about, I think you did not watch the training videos, but the training videos we supply to all of our customers help people make that adjustment. Particularly, most of our customers haven't ridden a bike since they were, you know, since they were kids. And since our since our customer base is anywhere from age 40 to age 70, uh, that's a long time. So that makes for a, it, it does it does challenge 
it does challenge you a little bit, but I'd say that the training videos give you a lot of guidance and that would have, that would have helped. Yeah, Peter, you got me there. I do admit I watched the video on assembly and then I was off to the races. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anybody that buys one of Peter's bikes, make sure you watch the videos. So, so once I got it into a lower gear, it definitely made it easier to, uh, Right on the hills, I, I did notice. Uh, so I've ridden other models of e-bikes from other manufacturers, and it 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 did seem like the bike didn't respond to pedaling uh, in the way that other bikes that I've ridden do. Can you explain that a little bit? Uh, difference between the bikes that you're familiar with and ours is that we don't use torque um, torque sensing in our in our in our uh, uh, pedaling and you know sort of the 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 part the pedal assist mode that we use is the older style speed sensing because we found that you want to have a lot better control and uh, better control of your over your motor and be able to accelerate up hills in first gear just particularly like I was on on these trails unfamiliar with what was around the corner so stay in first gear and then use the throttle whenever you need to, so you can get full access to whatever power you need, um, regardless what situation you find yourself in. And as you can see by the video, or maybe sense by the video, I had no idea where I was going. I trusted you entirely with this with this trip, and for that reason, it gave me a lot more. It gave me a lot more control. I didn't, um, it, and that's been an emphasis from from day one with us is. The throttle is there for a reason, and it's what you need in order to get through the difficult parts. The pedaling, great for on-road and great for when you know exactly what's around the corner and what you're doing, and to extend range a little bit. But on the whole, using the throttle to get through the difficult stuff is the way to go. Yeah, I was I was really surprised. Uh, at one point, we stopped the ride, and and you told me to gear down. And honestly, Peter, I thought I was in first gear, and but these bikes have so much torque. I was actually, I think I was like in fourth or fifth gear. Yeah, um, we can we we can look at the video. I think it was more than that. It was like six or seven. Or seven. <laughs> you were like, you're ready for the race course. But I didn't I didn't even realize it because there's so much torque in these motors. But once once I geared down to to, to first and second gear on that steep hill, it made a huge difference. And you're right, powering through with the throttle, that's the that's the answer to the rough spots uh, that really helps uh, get through. So thanks for the riding lesson. So Peter, one of the thing I, one of the things that I've been impressed with since the box showed up at my house. So you guys, you guys uh, packed up a bike and shipped it to me and uh, man, from the time I opened the box, everything uh, just said quality. You know, the the packaging, everything I saw was was very impressive. And and as I've talked to you more about uh, your design and your build process for your bikes and your and your testing process, uh, it it just says a lot about the quality uh, of of Rungu bikes. Can you tell me, can you explain to people a little bit more about your design and your build process? Sure. We have a team of engineers that are in-house where we design, we test, we build, we QC, we do all the shipping, just like you saw. All that stuff was taken up, you know, assembled in our shop, in in our in our factory, we call it. It's, it's, a, it's a very small factory, but it's a factory nonetheless, where we have um, some technicians as well as engineers to build it. But first off, we will we, we do all of our own designs. So all the bikes are designed using, you know, the most current CAD software. And more importantly, we do simulation testing. And I know you're an engineer and you know, and have learned to appreciate over the years, like I have the ability to simulate testing and see the impact on it. You don't have to build a frame and break the frame. You can design it and then measure uh, using the technology where are the weak points and and redesign is necessary. So we'll do many iterations of every design before we even think about getting a prototype. And um, then our contract manufacturers that we have build the frame, build other components, and they build them to they build them to our specifications and and particularly the frame 
that uh, we supply quality control equipment to the to the contract manufacturers so that they're testing to our specification, not only measuring using measuring tools that they have on hand, but stuff that we've developed specifically for our designs so that they can, you know, it passes or fails based on what we've what we're expecting, not what they interpret our expectations to be. And then when it, when the parts come in, we do a lot of uh, a variety of quality control systems. Uh, we do incoming inspection like batteries. We do uh, tests where we figure out what the actual output of the battery is. What is the actual capacity versus what they put on the label? It's never the same. And the so and, and what we advertise is really what is our specification. It's not it's not the labeled it's not the labeled version, which is all it's always a little less than the label. We do burn in for the motors uh, before we actually install any of them onto the onto the bikes. And then finally, we do uh, well. We do a lot of in process inspection as well. If we didn't catch it up front, we'll catch it while we're building it, um, so that we don't get it out to the customer until it's it's to met our specification and our satisfaction. And finally, we have a to that point, we have a quality control process. It's about 40 steps, actually varies depending on the model, but uh, that includes a test ride. And I'm usually the one who'll do that final test ride. So <laughs> I make sure it works before it actually gets into a box. Um, but we have fine group of engineers and support that do exactly that in my stead when when I can't when I can't be there. So I mean, I think we were the first e-bike company to offer a two-year warranty. I'm not sure, but we, you know, we back our products with a two-year warranty because we've done all this testing. We know that that's, that's what the bikes are capable of and, and the uh, components are certainly capable of. All right. So, so Peter, this is definitely a unique bike. Uh, as people shop for e-bikes, they'll notice there's not much out there or not anything out there like the Rungu. What What is it that drove you to come up with the idea for two wheels up front? Well, thanks. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of that written on the website and background. But fundamentally, um, Southern California, where, we're, where I'm based, we have a lot of sand. We have a lot of rock and a lot of opportunities to wash out and lose traction that you would uh, with with regular fat tire bikes. And I'm not even talking about e-bikes. I started years ago, uh, a, a neighbor had one of these fat tire e-bikes. I never seen, I'd never seen anything like this. And I tried riding it on a beach and it, um, I, I got a few feet and I was like, wow, I got a few feet, which is a lot more than you could say for any beach cruiser as they're labeled. And uh, so it was one of those things where, okay, well, why can't we make this a little bit better? And why can't we take it so that it actually works in the kind of terrain that Southern California is known for? Um, like, you know, we, we have a video, a great video of the, the, uh, the Mojave um, Trail, which is like 200 miles going from the border. That's not 200, but it's somewhere between 100 and 200 miles going from the border of Arizona into um, Barstow, uh, California, and it's desert. I mean, it's just really soft sand. It's really deep. And we were able to get through it. We were able to um, get through the difficult terrain. And, and unfortunately, the cameras weren't functioning right. But there was one section where the trail is just deep sand. It winds through Joshua trees and jumping cactus. And if you've ever seen either you know you don't want to be anywhere near it at any speed and the fact that we were able to make it it was testimony to the capability of the design and the uh, power of the motor frankly so i i definitely have some experiences with riding not e-bikes and other types of bikes motorcycles so i have a little bit of experience with with washouts myself uh in fact my my wife has a plate on her collarbone uh, from a particularly nasty washout. Um, but where where do you find that the Rungu Dooley design works the best? What kind of terrain do you think uh, it's best suited for? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, <laughs> simple simple answer is off road in general. We outperform all e bikes on off road terrain, and I mean not just not just trails, but uh 
everywhere else outside of the trails that you can access with a bike that, you know, it's where you dare. So sort of. and I, I'm not as I, I, I'm not even as as uh, daring as you, as you proved on the on the road. But I'll um, uh, but the, the real issue with washouts, the biggest or most popular place to wash out is going downhill on and even it's and oddly enough it's usually on dirt uh on on fairly easy dirt trails we have uh with our engineers we have experience where we were doing demo or comp compare contrast videos that you can see on youtube and the engineer who was riding the uh, uh riding the single front wheel e-bike the the you know equivalent power but only one front wheel he was expert i mean expert motorcycle rider probably like you and would take this thing take the single front wheel our our bike places where i i wouldn't dare yet when we would scout for other trails or other places to film uh, he was the one who he would take uh, the the single front wheel e-bike and and actually washed out hard and it wasn't on any difficult terrain at all it was just a little it was a little dirt back road a connector it wasn't it didn't even compare it to the stuff that we've filmed yet um he ate it and he, he ate it bad uh it was not a it was not a pretty sight fortunately he was wearing a helmet always wear your helmet um and it, the you know because of california it was like dirt dirt road which is not a big deal but on the side of the road it's all rocks and cactus so so does he, he so, does he have a plate on his does he have a plate on his collarbone now yeah i didn't i didn't <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to go there i don't want to <laughs> unearth bad memories but no fortunately he does not but he did have a, he did skin a skin and knee his hand and there was blood so put it that way um so you know so particularly downhill and and you know more and more of our custom more and more of our customers come to us because of bad experiences with e-bikes where they've washed out where they, and they're just tired of it they're tired of the the diggers as they're called and they use the air quotes diggers so um yeah and we've 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 solved that problem yeah i i can really see that being an issue uh, the the scenario that comes to my mind is coming down a steep hill with not a lot of traction where you're loaded up uh either you know packing stuff out from a hunt or just with a lot of weight on the bike that seems like uh a washout nightmare that the ringu could help you avoid yeah um, and and i'll just add to that the um hauling you know you talk about heavy duty and particularly when you're hauling stuff if you've either got a trailer if you've got a lot of load on the back on the, on the back of the bike, it just gets harder to control. The more stuff that you're carrying, the more difficult uh, it, it is to control anything. I mean, talk about, you know, just towing a trailer with a, with a truck, right? So having that extra stability, that extra capability on the front end pays dividends.